Hi, I'm your host Tish Tansel, and this is Urban Esque Living. Hi, welcome to Urban S Living. I'm your host, Chef Tish Tansel, and today I have an answer to one of your questions. What am I going to do with all of this fruit? Sometimes we go to bulk stores or we go to the market and we buy a lot of fruit. And sometimes we don't have time to eat it all before it starts to, to go bad. Well, today I'm going to show you a really cool thing to do with that fruit that's going to please you, your family, and your friends. Stay tuned. I'd like to drop out of high school and get a meaningless job that makes me feel bad about myself. I'd like to fall victim to the old boys network. I don't want anybody to notice me. I just want to fly under the radar. I want to splatter against the glass ceiling. I don't have an opinion. I want to be a straight C student. I'm going to be a biomedical engineer. <laughs> I mean, I want to succumb to peer pressure all of my life. I'm going to be a best-selling author <laughs> and win the National Book Award. I'm going to be a marine biologist. Wait, I take my back. I'm going to be a biomedical engineer. I think I'll be the president. I'm going to be secretary of state. World-class chef, right here. Race car driver. Artist. Paleontologist. Film director. Surgeon. Teacher. Scientist. Olympian. I'm going to be the boss. I'm going to change the world. Hi, welcome to Urban Esque Living. I'm your host, Chef Tish Tansel. And today, I'm here to answer one of your questions about what am I going to do when my fruit starts to ripen? Sometimes you might want to make a smoothie. Sometimes you might want to freeze it. But there are other solutions that you can use a ripe fruit for. And today, I'm going to show you one of those solutions. Today, we're going to be making homemade fruit leather. You know that tasty stuff that kids love? Well, adults like it too. And uh, you can make it at home. Now this is a fruit dehydrating rack. And this is the mat that you make fruit leather with. So if you don't have both of these components, you can actually still make fruit leather in your own oven. You just need a tray and you just need a pan liner. That's it, you're good to go. So what we're going to do first is we're going to cut up our fruit. And so I've selected bananas, apples, kiwi, pear, and an apple, and some orange for a little bit of spice. So I'm going to cut these up. And actually as I'm cutting, I'm going to just put them right in my mixer. We are all about not having lots of dirty dishes. I'm going to actually put the heaviest ones or the more dense fruit down at the bottom closer to the blade because basically what we're going to be doing is making a fruit puree, meaning we're just going to really make this fruit into almost like a smoothie basically. But this is going to be a, a smoothie that you can carry around with you. And whatever fruit you like, you can actually make it into fruit leather. It all works. All you need is the fruit. Bananas are great for potassium, but one of the things that I'd like to mention, if you are going to use banana in your fruit leather, remember to have some type of an acid because that banana is going to turn black. It's all going to darken anyway, but you just want to make sure that you have a little acid and that's where this orange comes in. Our kiwi actually has acid in it too. Pineapple makes a great fruit leather, lots of flavor in it. 
The great thing about fruit leather is that as the fruit dehydrates, the flavor intensifies. Now when it comes to kiwi, you can actually throw the whole thing in. Because by the time we get through pulverizing this fruit in our high powered blender, you won't see it anyway. Now in order to make fruit leather, you really don't need a lot of fruit. You would think that because of the dehydration process, you would have to add a good amount of fruit because it would uh, dehydrate, but actually you really don't have to add a lot of fruit. These trays are kind of on the shallow side. And so you're actually going to add just enough fruit just to cover the bottom of it. Just enough, uh, maybe a little bit less than a 16th of an inch of fruit. So this will actually go a long way. is nice and smooth. This would actually make a delicious smoothie. So if I have some left over, that's what I'm going to do. But what I'm going to do also, before I, I use this orange, I'm going to take some of the skin off because I, I want to do a, something a little different with this. I want to have a little bit of this orange zest in there so that I have a bit of a little citrus as well as um, a little bit of a, a zing to it. So I'm using my microplane, and basically what you're doing is just running it across the skin of the orange, and you're just taking enough off so that you see a little bit of the white underneath. You really don't want to see a lot of that because that means that you are getting some of that bitterness, and you really don't want to do that. So you're going to go around the entire orange because I like to try and utilize as much of the product as possible. You can do this with lemons, oranges, limes. This is great for adding a little bit of extra citrus flavor to whatever it is you're doing. And see, it kind of collects right there in between the microplane. So that way you can just tap it in there and you have your orange zest flavor. Use my bowl scraper to get the rest of this up. Okay, so now I'm just going to slice my orange open. Okay, so now that I have zested my orange, I'm just gonna peel away the skin from it. And I can even peel it or just pull it apart. Sometimes it's easier just to use your hands. You can use a knife, but it comes loose very easily and just toss the orange in there. But you do want to get the zest off prior to taking the oranges out. You need something to kind of hold it in place so that you can get that uh, zest off of the peel. And just peel it back and we have our orange. Okay, so now we're going to turn our mixer back on. Okay, so now everything is all mixed together. And we are ready for the next step. Now this is actually a very quick and easy thing to do. Okay, so we have our fruit all mixed up and ready to go. We added a little bit of acid to make sure that the fruit stays preserved. And acid does help preserve. You don't have to add um, any other type of chemical to this. Because sometimes people have allergies. So what you're going to do is pour this onto your mat and make sure that it's evenly distributed. Now the, now the size of your mat will actually tell you how much you can put in here. And we're just gonna shake this a little bit to make sure that all of it's covered. I'm gonna use my spatula too because it is kind of thick and it's not moving and I don't want it to uh, get on the sides. So I'm going to put this in the dehydrator and this is going to go for the next Till the, tomorrow morning it should be ready. Hi, welcome back to Urban Esk Living. Now as you remember, I made some root leather. 
and I put it in the oven about 24 hours ago and just let it go on the dehydrating feature. So I'm going to take it out of the dehydrator now so you can see how beautiful this looks. The house smells all fruity. So. Okay, so as you can see, it really does look like leather. That's why they call it fruit leather. Now this one I already pried apart, and this is what we have. An entire wheel of scrumptious preserved fruit. You can wrap it in wax paper, or you can just snack on some. I actually tried some this morning when I got back from my jog. But I'll show you how easy it is to get off of these mats. Now, you see it here in the mat, and it's in there pretty well. Uh, the trick is that you make sure that your leather is completely dry and that means when you touch it you don't have any stickiness on your hand. It's completely dry. And so once that happens, when you have these mats such as this, all you have to do is bend back the edges. Or, or, the fruit leather starts to pull away from the mat surface. So once you get your fingernail or your spatula underneath it, it pulls apart from the plastic mat very easily. There you have it. Homemade fruit leather. I hope you try this. It's very easy to make, very delicious to eat. You can go to my Facebook page if you have any questions on making fruit leather. That's Urban as Living Facebook. Or you can find me at Tish Tansel. Please tweet me. Let me know if you have any recipes that you would like me to try on air. This is Tish Tansel, and thank you for joining me on Urban Esk Living. Here we go. We're going we're gonna to make some juice. It's going to be good. She's excited. A little bit of kale. Please don't put this on the line. I'm putting it all over the line. It's wet. It needs something. No, it'll go. Don't break my juicer. Looks good. You ready to try it? Come on, baby. Try. Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. It's okay. Okay, like it. all right. They might surprise you. And she took another sip. You saw it? Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. Hi, I'm Chef Tish Tansel, and my culinary tip for the day is for people who have a lactose intolerance or a milk sensitivity. You might want to order a smoothie, but a lot of times the main component of a smoothie is a dairy product such as yogurt. Well, I've learned that you can make an excellent substitution for that dairy product and have a very smooth and creamy smoothie by just adding some plain oatmeal. And I'm going to show you how that looks if you have any doubts. First, I'm going to add in my mixer my almond milk and coconut milk. So it's about a half cup coconut milk, half cup almond milk. I'm going to put in there a banana because bananas are excellent for potassium. And because it is a tropical smoothie, I'm adding some kiwi. And I have some mango, which is actually excellent. I love mango smoothies. And yes, I know blueberries are not the most tropical, but I love blueberries, so I'm adding blueberries to my tropical smoothie. And I'm going to pour the oatmeal in right on top of that. So I'm just going to pulse it. has basically disappeared into the smoothie. But because we know smoothies have to have that nice chilled feeling, I'm going to add some ice to this. Now I recommend adding the ice less because you want to make sure that that oatmeal is ground in your smoothie. You don't want big lumps of oatmeal. So we're just going to just going to pulse this. All right. 
And this is what it looks like. This is our smoothie made with oatmeal. Smooth, rich, and delicious. And most of all, dairy free. I'm Tish Tansel, and that's my culinary tip for the day. Substituting oatmeal in your smoothie. Gaining weight was easy. All I had to do was sit down and eat. Losing weight's a lot harder. I have to work at it every day. But with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes every step, every choice, every day. Very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes by losing weight, eating healthy, and staying active. Visit CheckupAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. Hi, I'm Chef Tish Tansel, and welcome to my kitchen. Have you ever been on a diet and craved something sweet like sweet potato pie? But you know that sweet potato pie is way off your calorie chart. Well, I'm going to show you an easy way to make sweet potato pie for breakfast. And it acts as a meal supplement. And all you're going to need are some cooked sweet potatoes, a little vanilla extract, some sweet potato spices, and I've mixed in some cinnamon, some ginger, and a little nutmeg, coconut water, and some oatmeal. And we're going to make a sweet potato smoothie. And you're going to need a mixer, and we have our mixer here. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add my coconut milk. And I'm making enough for two people, so this is two servings, and that's one whole cup of coconut milk. And then I'm going to add the sweet potato. And I'm going to post this on our mixer. Okay, so as you see, we have a sweet potato puree. And so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to add a little bit of our vanilla. And all you need is a little bit of vanilla. And I'm going to add our spices. And last but not least, I'm going to add our oatmeal. And you're wondering, like, how can you eat oatmeal as a smoothie? Well, it actually makes a terrific smoothie. I'm not one that eats a lot of dairy, and so I use the oatmeal as a substitute. It makes your smoothie very smooth and creamy. And, that, and last but not least, I'm going to add some ice. And that's going to give us a very smooth and creamy consistency to our smoothie. And that way you have that uh, nice chilled beverage after your workout. Okay. All right, and as you can see, our smoothie is very smooth and it has a lot of sweet potato flavor. If you like, you can actually add some honey to this or whatever sweetener you like. But if you're watching your calories, all you need is the natural sweetness from the sweet potato. That's quite sufficient. But as you can see, our smoothie is nice and creamy and smooth, and you can't see that oatmeal in there. But what it does is add a great deal of smoothness and it adds a filler. And so as you go throughout your day, you're going to find that you're not as hungry as if you had a smoothie without the oatmeal in it. And this, I promise, will last from breakfast all the way until lunchtime. And that was my tip for the day. Add oatmeal to your smoothie. Thank you. I'm Chef Tish Tansel and welcome back to Urban S Living. Today, like I said, we're going to be making some chips, but these are not your regular chips that are fried in oil. These are going to be chips that we make in the dehydrator. And 
My oven has a dehydrating feature, which I absolutely love because I've been dehydrating all kinds of fruits. I found these racks, which are plastic dehydrating racks, and you can get these at your store or you can buy these online. And if you don't want to use these, you can use a plain wire rack in your oven or you can do it on a silicone mat. But they come out a little bit crisper when you use this because these have air shelves on them and it allows the air in your dehydrator to circulate and it makes the top and the bottom crisp and dehydrated at the same time so that you don't have to flip them, which takes a lot of time. So the first thing we're going to do is to choose our fruit. And today, I have selected some wonderful mango and some kiwi. So we're gonna have mango and kiwi chips. The first thing I'm going to show you how to do is to slice the fruit for the dehydration because the slicing is important because you have to be consistent with the size of your fruit, otherwise they will all dry at a different rate. A mango slicer is wonderful because it's a one, two, three, you're done step. And mangoes can be a little bit on the slippery side, but a knife works just as well. When you're using a mango slicer, what you're going to do is make sure that the mango is pointing upward, and that means that the seed is right here in the center. So you're just going to sit the mango down in front of you. You're going to place the slicer right on top and you're just going to press down. There you go. The mango is sliced perfectly. And you have a seed that's in between. So we have two perfect mango halves. And so from this point, what we need to do is peel the skin off of the mango. Okay, so our mango is almost peeled, and what I'm going to do is just take our paring knife and trim around any little pieces that have remained on here. And a paring knife is excellent for doing that. It's a small, compact little knife, and you can just use it for smaller jobs. Okay, so our mango is now sliced and skin-free, so we're going to slice these into slices about 1 8 of an inch thick. That's a very good size for dehydrating your fruit. Okay, so now our mango is all sliced. So I'm going to slice the kiwi while I'm in the slicing mode right now. And slicing a kiwi, depending on how firm or how soft it is, is what's going to determine how you slice it. Now there are methods where you can slice a kiwi with a spoon. I'm going to use my paring knife to slice my kiwi today. I'm going to peel it. You can use a peeler on your kiwi as well. This one is pretty firm, so I could use this peeler on it as well, but it's a little bit small, and by the time I'm done, it'll be a lot quicker just using paring knife. So I'm just going to peel the skin off the kiwi, and basically you just peel this the same way you peel an apple. Just take it and just slice the skin off of it. Okay, so now our kiwi is nice and clear of that fuzzy skin that's on it. And when you're slicing the kiwi for the dehydrator, you have two choices on how you want the kiwi to look. You can slice it the long way, which is going to give you a beautiful oval kiwi, or you can slice it the shorter way, which is going to give you more of a circle. So I'm going to do these in the, the longer oval shape today. And so basically I'm just going to place it down on my cutting board. And once again, we're gonna make these slices about an eighth of an inch. Because if you make them any smaller by the time they dehydrate, they are going to be very, very thin and they're going to break very easily. So we're just gonna make the cuts in these. Okay, so both of our fruit has been sliced and now we're going to put them on the racks. Now when you're putting the fruit on these drying racks, you want to make sure that you give them a little bit of space because if they're too close together when they dehydrate, they're going to stick together. And if you're trying to do something like a garnish and you want the shapes perfect and you have them stuck together, they're going to break if you pull them apart. So what I'm going to do is just line our first one and it's best to keep these separate. 
you, you're going to put the kiwi on one rack and you're going to put the mango on another rack because they're going to dry differently. Okay, so that completes the tray that I have with the mango. And as you can see, they're evenly spaced and we want the air to circulate when we put them in the oven. Now we're going to do the kiwi in the same way that we did the mango. We're going to place them on the rack with a little bit of space between each one so that they don't stick together as they dehydrate. Okay, so now our kiwi is ready to go and we're going to stack these and that's the beautiful thing about these type of drying racks. They take up less space in your oven. So you can get up to five of these in, in your oven at one time because after a while they stack up a little bit high and you want the air to continue to dehydrate the fruit. So you don't want to pack them in too tightly. This is a little top and this actually helps the dehydration process. And we're just going to put that on top of here. And we're just gonna set these in the oven on our dehydrating feature. And normally this takes about 12 hours, so we're going to set these in the oven right now. Okay, and we'll be back and I'll show you what the finished ones look like because I did some earlier, so stay tuned. Families come in all sizes and shapes. Sometimes your friends are your family by choice. Or sometimes you're just stuck with Uncle Charles. But what we know is that you want to protect the people that are close to you. But the flu can unravel everything. Your flu vaccine protects you and your family. No matter what draws your family together, protect yourself. Protect your family. Everyone needs a flu vaccine. Okay, so welcome back to Urban S Living. And we are dehydrating our fruit chips today because we're watching our weight and so we don't want those fried chips. These are dehydrated chips. They have absolutely no fat in them. So I'm going to show you what the dehydrated mango and the dehydrated kiwi chips look like. Now these are our finished chips. Now I did not put these in any type of preservative. If you like, you can dip them in lemon or lime, which is a natural preservative, but these are fine. The sugar and the oxidation process turns them a little bit brown, but they're still good. This is the, the dehydrated mango, and this is the dehydrated kiwi. And as you can see, and here, they're very crisp. So this is Tish Tansel. Thank you for joining me on Urban Esque Living. See you again.